at the point of modernism, where you have both, say, Bud Powell and Monk, there's a, a school, a whole branch of pianists that come out of that, that kind of took the music in, in a different direction altogether. Randy Weston, Mal Waldron, Cecil Taylor, and Andrew Hill. You can call that like a black mystery school of pianists. say what exactly the mystery is other than the fact that they kind of approach the piano in a, a kind of classic way. Jazz as a whole is a mystery language. If you look at how society accepts it or uses it and, and you know, I mean, it's cool to be jazzy. Jazz is used in films. It's used in a lot of ways, but it's not a general part of everyday society now. So I, I think just being a jazz musician, you know, is a, m enough of a mysterious element to begin with.
um, not really attempting to be free jazz. I'm attempting to play a music that is me and the things that, um, because there's a lot of people that really like, like say, there's some people that like free music that I might bother. I, I might get on their nerves because I do a lot of chords that, chord sequences that are very traditional. You know, there's a lot of harmonic language in my music that could possibly be in the middle of a Debussy or a Ravel piece or, um, and I'm not really interested in free jazz per se. I'm interested myself in being Matthew Ship, whatever that is. Um, there's a lot of things that go through my subconscious mind, images that I try to project in the music. Some of the images you don't need to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> um, no, I, it, I, I see, when I play music, I try to delve into my own realm of heaven. Now, I, when I say heaven, I don't mean heaven in the Christian sense of some place you go with pearly gates and streets of gold. I, I mean heaven as um, the source of energy that powers your mind.
Well, okay. What do I like about this? The whole universe. <laughs> what can you say? I mean, he create. He's. I don't think there's any vice. I think he's like the greatest artist in um, Western civilization. <laughs> Actually, okay. I don't think. I mean, he's the ultimate um, model as far as creating your own universe, creating your own sound, and really going. You're it. You it, and you are the same. There's no distinction from where his music and his being and it, when when he walked around, it he bra- he breathed what he his the space time that he he generated on the piano, and when he played, it was an extension of his thought processes on a day to day basis. So, and I, I think he exemplifies that better than any artist possibly in Western civilization. Everybody wants. On some level, it wants to be, you know, felonious. So um, there's just no, I don't know if it's just, if it's insanity, if it's um, just the way his, his, his genes interacted with the energy in his mind or what, but, but I think it's just such a beautiful thing to see a person able to generate a universe have no fear about presenting it, you know, even through misunderstandings, which obviously naturally there are going to be intense misunderstandings when somebody is like that. But they just, um, you know, the whole life then becomes a, a, a poetic life. That, that's poetry on the highest level.
I'm not really trying to fit into anybody's um, mold or anybody's thing. I mean, I've that's been a problem and a gift for me. It's been a problem in the sense that if you don't fit in anywhere, you're just out here. And it's hard for people to get a handle on who you are because people in this society don't allow you to just be yourself. And if you are just yourself, it takes a long time, a long time for people to say, get it. It's like, oh, that's, that's him. That's what he does. And to give it credence and to give it credibility it takes a long time. Um, and at the same time, it's a gift because since I am myself and I have my own style, um, it does, you get a following for that reason. And, you know, I've been at it a long time. So there are people that do accept me for who I am. And they, they serve as a um, padding or as a, that when people just reject you because you do things your own way, that you have a actual following of people that say, well, yeah, his way is valid. Yeah. So um, there's both a blessing and a curse to being your own person. My education is meaningless. I'm always pushing against my education. And whatever I know on the instrument, you feel comfort in what you know. So hope, I'm always trying to push past that to something I don't know. Um, what you don't know scares you. And when you play something you don't know, you don't even know if it's working or not. And hence, the... Um, psychological need to go back to something you know because you, you know like a certain thing can get an effect from an audience or you know you play a certain sequence of notes or a certain chord and you know well even if this is out the audience will hear that I understand Monk's music or Duke Ellington's music I mean, those well, I mean because we all of us musicians even though we claim we're playing to the ether or to the universe in actuality, we're playing to many things, you know. There could be um, 
some beautiful woman that you want to impress. Yeah. Um, and you, you could be playing to that. A musician's operating on millions of levels as he's playing a concert. But the idea energy and the images that that um, generate your whole psychic life are there, whether you're pushing at them or not. And they have an autonomous life of their own. And they are pushing at the music also. So despite your intentions, despite what you think you're trying to do, despite who you're trying to oppress and not impress, the music has a life of its own also. So you could be lost in the music, but yet you're actually... Um, projecting very mundane things and situations, or you could be actually kind of um, lost in, in the mundane things and the music is pushing through anyway. There's no, I mean, there's no characterizing any of this. This is all mysterious. It's all kind of has its own life and it's all different psychic forces that interact in all kinds of bizarre combinations. <laughs> If, if everybody gets you, what's the use, you know, what's the use of doing it? I mean, you're just easily commodified. And um, not that I do what I do for shock value. I, in fact, I don't. In fact, there's a part of me that wants everybody to just get what I do and like me. And then there's a part of me that doesn't want everybody to get what I do and like me. Um, I don't do what I do for any shock value. I'm actually, in my own mind, just trying to create nice music on the piano. And I want people, hopefully, to get something out of it or to enjoy it. But at the same time, there's a part of me that's an extreme rebel and um, will only do things my way. And you either get it, and if you don't, there's the door. You know, Nobody's putting a gun to your head and saying you have to stay and listen. If you don't like it, the door is open. You're free to leave.
Thank you.